All right, everyone. <clears throat> Gotta pull myself together here. Welcome to the Tonto's Demise Week 11 Recap. Uh, pulling myself together because I can only handle 30 seconds of Kid Rock at a time. Any more than that, and um, I don't know what would happen. Bad things, probably. <laughs> it just reminds me of being, speaking of, um, since we had a bachelor party recently, it reminds me of being at Jim Crick's bachelor party on a party bus with Foy and Jim and his dad and a bunch of dudes that I didn't know, all chugging Miller Lights and drinking... Uh, uh, blasting that, I built, it was probably that song, or some Kid Rock songs, and everybody jumping around and singing along to the songs, except for me and Foy, just kind of looking at each other, and sipping our beers, <laughs> wondering where we are. <laughs> anyway, week 11. <sighs> so, a lot of things happened this week. Let's address... Probably one of the most more bizarre things that's happened all year long, if not ever. <laughs> the whole Steelers Browns scuffle on Thursday night. Here's my take. Thinking a little bit about it more. Look at watching the uh, video re 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 uh, replays and stuff like that. First of all, fuck you, Cleveland Browns. You are headhunting people. That entire game, you took you take out Juju, you take out Deontay Johnson. Um, that the hit on I, you know that and the guy gets mad, he's gonna cry because he got thrown out of the game. You know that the NFL does not want these hits in the game anymore. So why are you doing it? Why are you throwing yourself at a receiver who a defenseless guy? Throwing your shoulder and your head into his head, like, what are you? What, what are you thinking? I know you're running fast. I know you're hitting, going for the guy, but why aren't you thinking about going for the ball or just a tackle? You no, know, maybe run for it or at least try to stop yourself. Like, instead of drilling Johnson in the side of the head, he spins completely around in the air so hard you hit him in the cheek. He spins in the air before he, the whole way around before he falls to the ground, and he's rolling around on the ground. He's bleeding out of his ear. It's just I'm that you know that they don't want that in the game. So why are you doing it? It's just dirty. You guys uh, just tackle him, or you know somehow don't hit like uh, try to avoid the hit. Do some anything different. Because you know that's not what they want in the game. They're trying to get rid of it. So why do you keep doing it? So hitting people. And like these are you know, you're all supposed to be friends off the field. Like I know you're on the field, your opponents and your enemies. But all the attention given to concussions and players, um, their lives outside the game and after the game that we understand so much more than we did before about concussions and head injuries and things like that, and yet you're still hitting people in the head. Um, not Maybe not always intentionally, but quite often it seems uh, very avoidable. But anyway, let's get into the other <laughs> issue of that game, where, of course, uh, at 15 seconds left in that game, Mason Rudolph was got rid of the ball, threw it away to a receiver. Um, game was over. The guy ran out of bounds. Whatever. Um, Miles Garrett comes up. Mason Rudolph is just standing there. He bear hugs him. Pit, uh, pile drives him into the ground. Mason Rudolph doesn't like that. Uh, he starts fighting back. Um, and of course, 
you know what would happen here, but um, the point of the story is, uh, first of all, I have a hard time, be like, Mason Rudolph, I understand why you're mad, um, you just got driven into the ground with 10 seconds left in the game for really no reason, this Garrett has a history all season long of getting fines and penalties for excessive hits on quarterbacks and things like that. So this is really nothing new for him. But um, what are you, I don't understand, what does Rudolph really, what does he think was going to happen there? Like, I have a hard time believing that he was really, in his mind, he's like, I'm ripping Miles Garrett's helmet, helmet off. I think he was I'm giving him kind of the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe he was just like pushing and shoving, and I'm going to push. Get, I'm mad, so I'm going to do whatever I can to scrap with you, maybe start something, and I, maybe it just looked like he was trying to rip his helmet off. Like, why would you take Miles Garrett's, like, what? why would that go through your head that you should pull his helmet off and, like, I don't... Maybe, maybe that's what he was thinking. Maybe that's what he was doing. I know I've seen pictures of it, but I don't know if it actually did happen too. Like, he was, did he really try to kick Miles Garrett in the nuts or something like that? Okay, maybe I don't. I don't know uh, for sure. I'd have to go back and we'll probably watch the replay again to see if that did, did that actually happen or not. Was that intentional or did it just happen to be like he was? I don't know his if he was kicking at him or what happened there when they were tussling back and forth. But anyway, of course we know that Garrett ripped Rudolph's helmet off, uh, swung it back at him, and hit him in the head, and then Pouncey. Start punching him, and they tackle Garrett to the ground, and Pouncey is kicking him in the head. And the other guy from the Browns comes up and shoves Rudolph from behind and knocks him down to the ground. Okay. Obviously, Miles Garrett was wrong to do most of the things that he did in this scenario. However, this may surprise you, but I will say, after having watched the press conference after the game, the... Uh, I have decided, maybe this might be an unpopular opinion among people, but um, I've decided that I don't like Mason Rudolph. You may have thought I was going to say Miles Garrett, but no. Um, calling it Bush League and acting, doing stuff, acting like you had no, you were guilt-free, that you didn't do anything, like you didn't start, you know, start a, you're trying to start a slap fight on the ground there with Miles Garrett, like, Calling him Bush League, did you maybe, and you tried to, you possibly tried to kick him in the nuts, or whatever you did, um, maybe? Kicking someone in the nuts is pretty Bush League. I just, I, I don't know. I didn't like his demeanor, I didn't like his attitude, his just, um, I didn't do anything guilty sort of approach to it in the press conference afterwards. Um, I mean, I have only seen it maybe two, three times, like, Pit bits of that um, press conference and what Rudolph had to say, but um, I'm just going to put this out here now. I hope that Big Ben comes back next year. I hope that Mason Rudolph fades into obscurity uh, sooner rather than later because, I don't know, I just, I don't like him as a person based on what I saw from this stuff. I'm not taking, I'm not saying that um, he had no reason to be, I mean, he sh he had reason to be mad. Um, of course, he did throw four interceptions and was playing a terrible game at the end there. Uh, he deserved to be upset that he got driven to the ground like that for no reason. But um, to act like he was completely innocent and didn't do anything, um, I mean, you he, after he got his helmet taken off, he charged at Garrett. Like, um, but I, just, I don't know, just something about his kind of smug attitude afterwards in that press conference, um, I don't know, Mason Rudolph putting you on blast. I don't like you. I've decided that. Miles Garrett, I really don't, I kind of understand why you were felt like you needed to defend yourself or whatever, but there was no need to do that. But I'm um, not, definitely not defending him. But um, yeah, that's how I feel about this. Maybe I was kind of, kind of surprised maybe some, but um, yeah. Mason Rudolph, I don't like you. I hope you're gone sometime soon. Just nothing like another injury 
or anything like that. I just hope that your poor play um, takes you somewhere else or just um, <laughs> to another job in the near future. So, all right. That's what I have to say about that. Having thought about it a little bit further over the course of the weekend. Let's see. Let's actually maybe talk some things that actually happened this weekend. Um, were there anything, was there anything else really that stood out? I don't think so. This week was the final week for the knockout pool. It came down to Mighty Midgets versus Hillbillies on PCP. And Hillbillies on PCP lost that one. <laughs> he won his matchup, but he lost the knockout pool. Uh, Mighty Midgets, the winner of the knockout pool this, this year. Once again, playing for free next year, probably, uh, with his money. At least won from that. Who knows if he'll win any, any more down the line here. But um, yeah, he's at least probably playing next year for free. Once again, I'd be playing this year for free and probably again next season. All right, how about we actually get into the Week 11 matchups because there's a lot to talk about to talk about here. So, as always, we start with the defending champion, Yinzer Jags, going up against the top dog right now, the fellow podcaster, your trade partner. <laughs> um... Yeah, let's see, Yinzer Jags throw it up against Hillbillies on PCP. And Hillbillies on PCP pulls this one out. Uh, Yinzer Jags definitely had a chance to win this one. Um, 154 is probably one of, of the lowest scores you're going to get from Hillbillies on PCP this year. I see a, uh, a couple of decent scores. And then uh, it's, it's about half. <laughs> um, sing, a lot of single digit scores for Hillbillies on PCP this week, but I see uh, several more single di digit scores for Yinzer Jags, and unfortunately for you, that is not going to get it done when you're playing the toughest of competition this year. So, uh, Hillbillies on PCP, let's take a look at what he had. Kirk Cousins, quarterback, goes for 58. His three receivers. Galladay, Juju, and Sanu, they go for four and a half, four, and 3.2 respectively. So about 12 points total from your three wide receivers combined. Dalvin Cook, 16 and a half. McCaffrey, 30.1. So just about 47 points from those two, right around your usual 50. Uh, Vance McDonald, since no Hooper this week, he got you... 6.3. Uh, picked up and played Randall Cobb. Uh, I'm trying to remember who else you had in the flex spot there. Um, I think your other choice would have, it, without making a move, uh, that pickup, you would have had to play Madison. Madison from the Vikings there, the backup running back to Dalvin Cook. He only scored half a point. That would have been 21 point difference here. So if you had not, if you had actually uh, put some, played Madison, you would have lost this matchup. Uh, but you picked up Randall Cobb. He got you 21 and a half points there. Ended up being a pretty good play. He's been actually doing pretty quietly, been doing pretty well these past few weeks. Uh, back to back 20 plus point scores there for him. Uh, your kicker, Bailey from the Vikings, three points. And then the Steelers defense, I believe the score was seven. But 154 was enough to get past Yinzer Jags this week. Let's take a look at what he had. Jameis Winston, to go for about 47. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins scores 15 points, more than all three Hillbillies wide receivers just by himself. But unfortunately, Emmanuel Sanders only went for 6.3. And Robert Woods was a surprise inactive, so you had to move him to the bench. You picked up and plugged in Demarius Robinson, I believe. Demarcus Robinson, from wide receiver from the Chiefs, hoping for uh, some points there from him. You needed about 
I think you were down about 40 going into Monday night. You needed about 20 from Robinson and 20 from Kelsey. Kelsey delivered, but unfortunately, Robinson did not. James White and Mostert were your running backs, 9.5, 4.5 respectively. Kelt said Kelsey, he got you 22.2. In the flex, you went with Robbie Anderson this week because you have some bye week issues and some injury issues. Not to mention the fact that half most of your bench is defenses, so that doesn't help you when you're trying to find a flex play. <laughs> uh, seven and a half points from him. Your kicker, Tucker, about 12 or so. And then the Dallas Cowboys defense found their way back home to you. Uh, you plugged them in. They scored, I believe, 12 was what their total ended up being because we were talking about this back and forth a little bit. On Sunday night into Monday, Matt was trying to figure out how many points he needed to win, which was, I think, about, about 40, like I said. And he was trying to decide if he should um, just give it up and let the or make a move and pick somebody up and try to go for the victory there, which is what he ended up doing with a pickup of Robinson. Unfortunately, it did not work out. Um, I would have to wonder, though, what the score here for the Cleveland Browns would have been. Uh, just taking a quick look here. Uh, how about we... Let's do that real quick. We got, we got time to spare. Let's take a look at Yinzer Jags because Dallas's defense, like I said, they scored 12. So let's see what the Cleveland Browns defense, one of the, the, uh, the struggles of having malt, so many defenses to choose from. Wish somebody had mentioned that previously um, in the season here. So let's see. They had, let's see, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 4 is 16, and they won, so that's 19. Set only 7 points, so that jumps us up to 28. And 28, let's see. Taking a look at the box score here. Still 28 plus 6 is 34. And 3, 37. You would have gotten 37. So if you had started the Browns defense which you had there, you would have won this matchup. <laughs> Easy to, for me to sit here and say that now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is. it doesn't make it any less true. <laughs> so sorry about that, Matt, there. Um, yeah. Uh, unfortunately for the rest of us, Hillbilly's on PCP gets the victory. He gets actually win number eight. He is two games ahead of everyone else with two games to go. He's in first place, eight and three. Yinzer Jags, you drop to five and six, under 500 now. Uh, as we know, we had a whole slew of five and fives. Uh, some people moved up, some people moved down. Unfortunately, Yinzer Jags moved down, five and six. He is in 10th place with two weeks to go. Trying to hold on, steal, steal a playoff spot there and at least try to defend his championship there. All right, let's just go right down the line here. We have Springfield Isotopes going up against Mighty Midgets. Uh, Mighty Midgets had a lead, I believe. Let me take grab my notes here. The lead was about 45, 44, 45 or so going into Monday night. Mighty Midgets still had Eckler and Butker to play, but the Isotopes had Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and Melvin Gordon left to play. So you think uh, about four, the 45-point margin there, Patrick Mahomes probably himself should be able to cover that, which means it's Hill, versus, Hill and Gordon versus Eckler and Butker, a kicker. Uh, I like those chances nine times out of ten. <laughs> Unfortunately, this was the 1 out of 10. As Mighty Midgets holds on and gets the victory, final score here, 188.95 to 163.15. For Mighty Midgets, he had Matt Ryan go for 43.5. His wide receivers, Marquise Brown, only 
Uh, big factor here, he had Matt Ryan to Calvin Ridley. Ridley pops off this week. Um, let's see, his highest performance of the season, 28.3. Cortland Sutton, another 20 points there. Kamara, 22.2. Uh, Eckler, 21.2. Witten, 8.5. Uh, the big trend, <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 acquisition is the word I'm looking for here. Uh, from Hillbillies on PCP last week, you traded away T.Y. Hilton, uh, hoping for some Im Im more immediate benefits from this guy, replacing Devontae Freeman in the starting lineup. Uh, he only got you 4.8. Perhaps you would have been better off holding on to T.Y. Hilton and starting, really, you could have just thrown Josh Reynolds or Sammy Watkins in that flex spot and been just as well this week. Um, so Butker, he went for 7, I believe it was 7.1. And then you picked up and played the Oakland defense. I actually think you dropped the Chargers defense to pick them up. Um, of course, I think before the game, that seemed like a pretty good idea. Oakland actually did okay. They got, I think, 29 was their score. Although San Diego actually, or the, the, Char the LA Chargers, actually uh, played a pretty good game. I'm not sure if they scored 29 points, uh, their defense, but they probably actually did pretty well because the uh, Chiefs didn't, <laughs> didn't do too much in this game. But anyway, so we had those three 20 points, uh, four 20-point scores, uh, five really with your defense there, almost 30, and then 43 from Matt Ryan, 188. Enough to get past the Springfield is Isotopes this week, as he has three players go for zero this week. Hard to overcome that. Unfortunately, one of those was Tyreek Hill, uh, pulling up with a hamstring injury very early in that game on Monday night. Basically, the game, <laughs> our matchup was essentially over. At that point, um, like I said, I got a zero from him. Patrick Mahomes, only 35 points this week. Um, under 200 yards passing, only one touchdown. Should I pointed out already on the line app, but um, Mighty Midgets should be uh, wondering how he gets so lucky because this was the um, lowest. This was the lowest score of Patrick Mahomes' career so far. 35. He had a just he had a 39.5 match uh, score in the Isotopes matchup versus Gags a few weeks back. That was the 0.15 uh, loss we had to Gags there. The, that and that was the first that was the first time uh, Patrick Mahomes had ever scored less than 40. He did it obviously in the game where he was injured. But uh, unfortunately for the Isotopes, this was the second time in his career that he has gone for under 40 points. So 35 from Mahomes, 0 from Tyreek. Edelman, 16. Michael Gallup, about, just about 24. Marlon Mack goes for 20 points. Um, pretty much all first half action from him. Then he goes out <laughs> with a fracture in his hand. He's now out. Uh, said he did over 100 yards and a touchdown in the first, basically in the first half of that game. If he doesn't get injured, uh, who knows what else he could have done because his backups came in and ran for another 100-some yards and scores against Jacksonville. Uh, so who knows there. Um, just a tw got 20 points from him. Melvin Gordon on Monday night, only 12 points from him. Uh, did I say... Did I say for Mac, did I say 20 or 12? I think, was I looking at Melvin Gordon? But yeah, it was 20 and then 12. Uh, then another zero here from Jack Doyle. That really stung. Um, he's been a solid 10-pointer. 10, 10 points or so for the last few weeks. Uh, so I was really disappointed to see him go out there and get a zero. Not even one target, I'm pretty sure. Definitely surprised by that. <coughs> Played Tariq Cohen in the flex here with David Montgomery. Uh, possibly was hoping that he maybe he would be inactive and get some more work there, but um, he actually ended up doing pretty well. Uh, Cohen goes for 18 and a half. 
And then another zero from the kicker, Lambeau from Jacksonville. Uh, picked him up to go for the rest of the season. Unfortunately, uh, he missed the field goal. Only had one PAT here. Uh, he actually was has been one of the uh, higher scoring kickers of the year so far this year. I was kind of surprised that I was able to pick him up uh, off of waivers there, but I think Tree had no choice thanks to the uh, Jacksonville's bye week a week, week or so ago, and then him having no moves. He had to uh, drop somebody, make a trade to get himself a kicker in his lineup. Thus, he let go of Lambeau, and unfortunately, uh, he went, uh, picked him up, thought he'd be all right, and he goes and gets a zero the first time I use him. And then the New Orleans Saints defense, uh, they actually had a pretty good game. I believe their score was 38. So, yeah. That's pretty much where we're at with this matchup. But said about a 25 point difference. You got to think those three zeros um, from the isotopes there. You figure maybe about 10 point, you just barely 10 points from each of those guys. That was definitely doable. Uh, assuming said so Tyreek gets hurt, what do you not? Nothing you can do about that. Mahomes has a disappoint, disappointing game. Uh, in the time of uh, the, the isotopes time of need. Uh, just can't get a good performance this week. Uh, but it's not like you're not going to bench Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? Just have to kind of grin and bear it. Uh, the season's not over. We've got a couple weeks left, so we'll see what still can happen. Uh, both teams were 5-5. Five and five. Mighty Midgets obviously move up to 6-5. and five. He is in second place, while the Isotopes drop to 5-6. and six. They are in seventh place. All right, we had the closest matchup of the week. Disco going up against 10 XL entries. And thanks to, I think, Cooper Cup there on Sunday night, uh, Disco was able to sneak out a victory. Um, probably in part two with James Conner re-aggravating his injury, going out in that game Thursday night, only scoring two points there. Uh, so really, all he needed was five points instead of two and a half there. And this matchup goes the other way. Unfortunately for Jay, that is not what happened. Final score here, Disco 172.95. Uh, 10 XL entries, 170.3. For Disco, he had no Aaron Rodgers. Packers on a bye this week. Played Sam Darnold. Uh, about 46 and a half points from him. Receivers, Godwin, Cup, and John Brown. Uh, Godwin, 13.5. Cup, only 8.3. Uh, but the big one here was John Brown. He pops off against the Dolphins for nine catches, two touchdowns, over 130 yards, uh, uh, 34.7 points. Running backs, Le'Veon and Miles Sanders. Le'Veon goes for 17. Sanders goes for 6.5. Waller, your tight end, the baller. Or is he smaller? I don't know. Uh, depends who you're asking. Uh, 12 and a half points from him this week. Uh, let's see. He had minus two rushing yards somehow. In the flex, also your Oakland Raider, Jacobs, 16 and a half points from him. Your kicker, Prater, only three extra points. Doesn't look like any field goal attempts there. Uh, so three points from him. And then the Minnesota Vikings defense. Yahoo says 8. Your score must have been about 12 or 14 based on the point difference there. I want to say 14. Uh, but yeah, I think it came really, must have come down to Cooper Cup there on Sunday night because oh, the, the, Bear, the Bears defense on Sunday night, Jay had them in. Uh, they weren't quite able to um, keep you in this one. They perhaps they get one more turnover, <laughs> and this one goes the other way, uh, but or at least have, or have won the game, which was definitely a challenge going up against the Rams. There, your only other defense was Green Bay. Back to the talking about them, they were on a bye, so you had to go with them, and just not too much you can do when said so you probably should have won this matchup, could have won this matchup, but uh, you got hurt by Connor's injury. 
you had Prescott this week since, uh, well, you actually, <laughs> you had Deshaun Watson, okay? You benched Deshaun Watson, which was the right call because he only scored 22 and a half points. However, you benched the Texans quarterback. However, you started a Texans wide receiver, a Texans tight end, a Texans running back. <laughs> you had you had Will Fuller on your bench. Uh, you, you started all of their positional players, but you benched their quarterback. So that kind of leaves, that's like, what is he doing there? I mean, obviously it ended up being the right call, but um, having all those, I mean, what do, it's gonna is what do you expect to happen there? Um, you don't want, uh, you know, if you think that the Texans are gonna put up enough points and yards to um, make all of those guys viable starters this week, uh, it's kind of surprising that you did not play Watson. Uh, but again, you made the right call here, so I can't uh, fault you for that. Just seemed odd to me that you would bench Watson and start all of his all of his uh, the people that he'll be throwing passes to, you know. Uh, but anyway, you didn't start Watson. You started Prescott, and he went off for seventy points this week. Your wide receivers, I how Devonte Parker. Perennial, perennial, um, this is going to be the year. This is going to be the year. This is going to be the year for the last five years. Devontae Parker, he's, this is going to be his year. He has actually been pretty consistent <laughs> this season. Um, he's been a dozen points or so, if not a little bit more than that, um, pretty much every week since week four. Uh, a, a definitely a viable wide receiver, a starting wide receiver this in the league this year. Uh, as much as it pains me and surprises me to say that, Devontae Parker, 20.5 points this week. Michael Thomas, 25.5. Kenny Stills said all of your Texans here that you started, let's take a look. Stills, 6.5. 6 Fells, 2.5. And, and Johnson, 6.5. So all single-digit scores there from your Texans. Fortunately for you, said so you benched Watson. Otherwise, this matchup would have been a blowout. <laughs> and maybe that would have been a little bit better instead of um, the two-point loss here. However, you need all the points that you can get at this time of the season. So even though you lost, you definitely should take that extra 50 points that you got from Prescott here this week because uh, you might need them here coming up in the next week or two. Uh, who did we miss? Michael Thomas, Stills, James Conner said only two and a half from him before going out with his injury. Uh, probably the biggest factor here in what swung this matchup in favor of Disco. Uh, Balage, another Miami Dolphin, 12 and a half points there. You're running back. Said Fells, 2.8. Johnson, Duke Johnson in the flex, six and a half. Your kicker, Elliott from the Eagles, about five or so. And then the Bears defense, uh, Yahoo says 12. I believe the actual score was 18. But yeah, uh, Jay, don't know what to tell you. Uh, injury problems have plagued you for the past several weeks. Uh, you're still hanging in there. I mean, don't worry. Uh, trust me, I know your pain uh, this year. But hey, we're both still hanging in there. We've still got a chance. Uh, in the <coughs> Excuse me. These final two weeks coming up. Um, so, you know, don't hang your head quite yet. Keep in there. Uh, keep battling. Uh, take a, actually, looking at it here, you're, you're still, even though you dropped to five and six, you are in sixth place there. So you're currently in a playoff spot. So, uh, yeah, maybe you can hold on to it. We'll see what happens. It's going to be fun to watch. Uh, both of you guys are now five and six. Like I said, uh, 10 XL entries is in 6th place, while Disco, he moved up to 8th place. Alright, next we had Shawshank going up against the Dub C Hooligans. Uh, after a disappointing loss last week, Shawshank bounces back, uh, approaches 200 points again this week, and gets the victory over the Dub C Hooligans, who went for 
actually 175 points this week, he would have, uh, let's see, you would have beaten 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 teams. Uh, you would have beaten 8 other teams this week uh, if you had played them, but unfortunately, <laughs> that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. You played, you ran into Shawshank and were unable to beat his score, uh, 197.6 to said disc, or, uh, Dub C, and even 175. All right, for Shawshank, we had Garoppolo in there because Russell Wilson was on bye. No Russell Wilson, no problem. Jimmy Garoppolo goes off for 71 points this week. Uh, his highest performance of the year. Uh, he did have 160 um, two weeks ago. But other than that, taking a look at quick look at his game log, he's been in the 30s pretty much every week <laughs> of this season, except for his 63, and this week his 71. So that's got to be frustrating for the Dub C hooligans there to see uh, how that panned out. Shawshank's wide receivers, Jamison Crowder, Allen Robinson, and Amari Cooper. Uh, Crowder, 18 and a half, but Robinson, only five and a half, and Cooper, six and a half. Chubb and Zeke, your running backs, only nine points from Chubb, and Zeke goes for about 19. Uh, tight end, Mark Andrews, uh, he had another touchdown, 75 yards, 17 and a half points from him. And then Fournette, your flex running back there, about 12 and a half points from him. Kicker, Sly, uh, he kicked one. I believe it was a 30-yard field goal. I think it was exactly 30, maybe 31, something like that. Um, then Baltimore Ravens defense. Looks like they had a bunch of sacks, cup turnover or two, only gave up seven points. Uh, your score looks like it's bumped up about 15. So they must have their score says 19 on Yahoo, but it actually must have been about 33, 32, 34. Something like that uh, for Baltimore. So it's about 100. So you got about 100 points from between Garoppolo and the Ravens defense. There, you needed all those points. Said to get past the Dub C Hooligans. Said this week, um, still a respectable score. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. In the losing effort, Dub C had Tom Brady go for 36 and a half. Curtis Samuel, only six and a half. Gage, the running or the wide receiver from Atlanta, he goes for only five and a half. And then uh, actually DJ Chark uh, goes off for 100 yards, two touchdowns this week, 30 and a half points there from him, uh, keeping you in this matchup. Ingram, uh, two receiving touchdowns for your running back there. Uh, for Baltimore, 23 and a half points. Ronald Jones, only three and a half. Zach Ertz, uh, nine for 94, 18 and a half. Darius Geis comes back from his injury, plugged him into the flex there. Um, he had a receive, he also had a receiving touchdown. Uh, not decent yardage, not much yardage really there. Uh, he was just under 14 points. Lutz, your kicker, he goes for about 10 or 11. And then the New England Patriots defense, Yahoo says 14. Uh, score must have been 27, I think, based on your difference there. But yeah, 175, unfortunately, for Dub C Hooligans. Not enough to get past Shawshank Athletics. I wonder what, what was Lamar Jackson's score? 52. Just for shits and giggles, 52. That would have been, come on, um, an extra 18 points. You still would have lost this matchup uh, if you still had Lamar Jackson on your team. I forget who else was involved in that trade. It doesn't really matter because we are where we are and you've got who you've got. So yeah, Dub C Hooligans, both of you guys in this matchup were 5-5. Five and five. Someone was going to get uh, win 6, someone was going to get loss 6. Shawshank, he gets the win. He's up to third place, while Dub C Hooligans dropped to five and six. They are in ninth place. Then we got Possum Magic versus Darkwing Jet. 
Darkwing Jet, one of the five and five. It's going up against the Basement Dweller, Possum Magic, who's been there most of the season. Although somehow Possum Magic has pulling some, been pulling some magic out of his hat these past few weeks and knocking off opponents like he's seven and four, not four and seven. <laughs> um, like he is in, like he is in either first or second place, not twelfth place there. Um, yeah, Possum Magic. Uh, from the basement, knocks off Darkwing Jut this week. Final score, one 165.7 to Darkwing's 130.55. For Possum Magic, he had Drew Brees go for 51.5. His wide receivers, Christian Kirk, Marvin Jones, and Terry McLaurin. Uh, Kirk uh, doesn't go off for a couple touchdowns this week. He comes back to earth. Uh, 10 points from him. Marvin Jones scores two touchdowns, but only gets you 20 points there. Uh, four for 43, but you'll take you'll take 20 points. Uh, McLaurin, just under 10. Your running backs, Damian Williams from Kansas City and Joe Mixon there. Williams uh, got you two and a half points before he went out with an injury. Fortunately, you were already playing with the lead and it didn't really matter on Monday night. Mixon, 17.3. Hunter Henry, just under 15. Uh, Beasley in your flex, 7.8. Kicker Carlson from Oakland, 4.5 four points there. And then the Colts defense. Yahoo says 13. Score must have been about 28. Taking a look at your differential there. So yeah, 165. Not a bad score. Not a great score. But enough to get past Darkwing Jut, who needed needed to get the win this week, wasn't able to do it. Uh, he unfortunately for him said a 35 point margin here. He went with um, Jared Goff this week. Just taking a look at Justin's bench there to see what we had. His he had Carson Wentz on the bench there. See what because uh, Jared Goff only 17 points from him this week. Uh, yeah, a disappointing performance there from him. You think he gets about 40 or so, uh, which you would think is a pretty average quarterback score. Um, well, 40 wouldn't have gotten you there, but uh, maybe it would have taken a little bit more than that. But still, uh, 165 is a beatable score. But unfortunately for <laughs> uh, Darkwing, he wasn't able to get it this week. Uh, yeah, a 17-point quarterback score is more often not, more often than not, um, going to result in a loss. Mike Evans, Odell Beckham Jr., and DJ Moore, pretty solid on paper, but they have been extremely hit or miss this year. Evans goes for 11, Beckham goes for 10, uh, DJ Moore actually goes for 17 and a half. He was the big score there for you. Uh, your running backs, Tevin Coleman and Kenyon Drake. 9 for Coleman, 14 for Drake. Ebron a tight end this week since no Evan Engram, I think, on a bye. Hoping he's, you're probably hoping he comes back from his injury as well this week. Uh, Ebron, 6.5. Singletary in your flex, just under 9 points. Uh, kicker, Matt Mayer from Dallas there. Looks like he got you about 10. And then the Rams defense. Let's take a look here. Yahoo says 12. But you had plus 15 there, so their score must have been about 27. But yeah, that 17-point quarterback score, uh, tens, single digits there, all scores around 10. Other, you know, that's not going to get it done. And Poston Magic, even though he is in 12th place still, he moves up to four and seven, still technically in the playoff hunt, although his point total is probably. Uh, even if he wins out and makes it to six and seven, and a six and seven team perhaps makes the playoffs this year, it will not be Possum Magic because I believe their point total is just uh, he's so far behind that at this point in time, there's really I would give him like a two percent chance to uh, somehow somehow squeak in um, there. But um, Darkwing Jet he drops to five and six. And he's actually just ahead of Possum Magic in 11th place. All right, we did all of these. Final matchup, yeah. Gags to Riches. 
versus Ed Lager. Uh, <laughs> the guy who brought you into the league, Ed, uh, defeats you this week. Um, let's see. Trying to knock, he actually knocks you down. You, I think you were in second place. He knocks you down the fifth. Um, makes, puts you into that six and five clump that we've got there. Both of you guys, actually. Uh, gags to riches, 186.15 to one, exactly 150 for Ed Lager there. Uh, let's take a look at gags. He had Philip, Monday night, he had Philip Rivers and Keenan Allen. Uh, just take a look at the notes here. I believe Gags was ahead by about 14 and a half or so going into Monday night. No, I'm sorry, Ed was ahead by about 14 and a half. But of course, um, Gags still had his quarterback left to play. That's usually going to get you uh, good, a good amount of points there. You had Rivers and Keenan, while Ed actually had Mike Williams. So guy, your quarterback was throwing to, and Miko Hardman in the flex there. Uh, unfor said, unfortunately for Ed Logger, uh, Rivers and Keenan had a touchdown. Uh, I think Rivers only touchdown pass there went to his own guy, Keenan Allen, and he, it was enough to get you um, pull you from a 13, 14 point deficit to a 35, 36 point victory here. So. Gags to Riches, like I said, he had Rivers and Keenan Allen Monday night. Uh, Rivers, 42 and a half, four interceptions. His score could have been a lot higher than that. He had 350 passing yards. Uh, but yeah, those four interceptions really uh, knocked the score back. Fortunately, it didn't make a difference here for you. Keenan Allen goes for 21. Julio goes for 14 and a half. Same for Landry, 14 and a half. Uh, Gurley goes for 20 and a half. Almost. His, would, I think, would have been his first 100-yard game of the year. I don't think, yeah, he, 97 yards. He had 97 yards in week one, 97 yards this week. That's the closest he has come to having a 100-yard game this year. Uh, did score a touchdown here, said he got you 20 and a half. Latavius Murray, 5.2. Greg Olson, 10 and a half. Debo Samuel in the flex. Uh, no touchdowns from him, but he had 8 for 134, so 21.4. Uh, kicker Zerline, about 5 or so, maybe 5.5. And, and then the Jets defense going up against Washington Redskins there. Uh, looks like he had a bunch of sacks, maybe a turnover or two. Did pretty well uh, overall there. The office is 15. The actual score must have been 31 or so based on your point differential there. So yeah, uh, you got enough points there on Monday night from Rivers and Keenan to pull you up ahead and past Ed Logger this week. Uh, he had Lamar Jackson go for 52 and a half. Uh, surprisingly, only 17 completions, and he still gets you 52 points, four touchdowns. I'm not sure how many rushing yards he had there. Uh, been pretty consistent for the most part. Uh, said so even though he's not throwing a lot, not getting, he's not getting a lot of completions. He's not getting a lot of, a lot of passing yards. Said so I don't think he had. He's only had one. Taking a quick look at his game log, he's only had one 300 yard passing game this year. Um, other than that, he's been in the 200s, mid to low 200s probably. He's had a couple 100 yard games, um, but yeah. He's been doing a lot of his damage to the, either on the ground or getting you extra points there, or he has just been converting his opportunities into touchdowns there. Uh, so yeah, 52.7 from him. Your wide receivers, Diggs, Pascal, and Mike Williams. Uh, Diggs, 23, but Pascal, only 3.5, and, and Williams, 9.5. Same thing for Philip Lindsay, 9.5 points there, and Kareem Hunt coming back. Uh, actually doing pretty good and catching a lot of passes here. Not a lot of rushing for him. Uh, but yeah, decent score, 11.8. Jared Cook in the flex, 11.3. Uh, then Miko Hardman, you had him in the flex there Monday night. Unfortunately, he only gets you 3.3. And just taking a look at your bench there, you don't really have any other options <laughs> because 
everyone on your bench is on by this week. So you pretty much had to start who you had, and it wasn't enough to get you past uh, Gags this week. Boswell, your kicker, he actually went for zero. He missed a field goal and made one only one PAT there, so zero. And then Buffalo Bills defense, Yahoo says 16. The actual score must have been 25 based on the point differential there. So, yeah, 36-point uh, victory for Gags to Riches over Ed Logger. Uh, he jumps up ahead of Ed. Uh, he's in fourth place. Both of you guys are six and five, but Gags is now in fourth place while Ed drops to fifth place. All right, those were all the matchups here for week 11. Only two weeks to go left in the regular season. Uh, let's see. We've got said Hillbillies on PCP. I see a little asterisk next to his name already in the standings there, meaning, meaning he has clinched a playoff spot. But then we have, let's see, one, two, three, four teams at six and five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six teams at five and six. And then, of course, Pasta Magic, only one game behind now <laughs> at four and seven in 12th place. So, 10 out of the 12 of us are either 6 and 5 or 5 and 6 going in to week 12. Two weeks left to go in the regular season. Let's take a quick peek ahead at the matchups for week 12. We'll let the, as we always do, we let the podcasters get into the preview of the matchups here. Which reminds me, I just want to say, um, I miss. Maybe I'm, it's just me. I, I miss the Tonto's Demise podcast logo up there every week. That green and orange or red Tonto's Demise picture with Brian and Detling in there. Uh, I miss that. I, I hope it comes back. Uh, I don't really care for the different pictures every week. Um, I miss the actual Tonto's Demise logo there. Um, maybe it's just because that, because it hasn't been around for a while, but I, I, I miss it. <laughs> anyway, let's see. So we've got all these six and fives and fives and six, fives, fives and sixes. So let's take a quick peek and see who might get win number seven and who might get loss number seven. Because if you get, said, so, uh, we'll only have one week left to go. So depending on if you get if you're one of those guys who gets win number seven this week, you're gonna be in a pretty good position to get a playoff spot. The people who get their seventh loss this week are going to be on the ropes. It's gonna to be tough. Um, I certainly think at this point it's still very possible that a six and seven team makes the playoffs, much to uh, the permanent chagrin of Detling who thinks that no one should make the playoffs with a losing record, but hey, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, when you have a season this tight and competitive as it has been for several for several weeks now, uh, just a big log jam in the standings here. All right, so let's take a quick look. We've got the Isotopes and Disco. Both teams are five and six going against each other. One of you is guaranteed to get lost number seven. One of you will move back up to 500 and hope to get win number seven next week. So that's a consequential matchup there. 10 XL entries versus Darkwing Jet. Both of you are five and six. One of you is going to get lost number seven. Who's it going to be? Jay or Justin? Uh, your projections are almost identical right now. Looking at Yahoo here. Uh, but yeah, both of you guys need this matchup. So one of you is going to, just like the other matchup, uh, one of you is going to get lost number seven and perhaps be stuck on the outside looking in here for the playoffs. Uh, Midgets versus Dub C, six and five versus five and six. Uh, Dub C trying to stay alive. Tough matchup against the mighty Midgets. We'll see what he can do. Uh, I said, as long as you've got the Patriots defense, anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think they're playing the Cowboys. So that could be a tricky matchup there for you. Uh, Gags to Riches 
versus Shawshank. Both of you are six and five. That means one of you will definitely be getting win number seven. Uh, I see Gang's projection is really low right now. I believe that's because he currently has no quarterback for this week. I'm sure that will change here in a few hours whenever the free agents, um, waiver wire pickups all go into effect there. We'll see what happens here. Uh, but yeah, that should be, that'll be a matchup to watch. Said one of you will get win number seven. One of you will fall back to 500. Uh, Hillbillies versus Possum Magic. Um, first versus last. Perhaps this will be the week where Possum Magic gets his nail in the coffin and clapped out with loss number eight. Although, if there's a week to be playing Hillbillies, uh, it might be this week because he, he currently has no quarterback. He has no Dalvin Cook. He has no kicker. Um, so we'll have to see what happens. Possum Magic, you have no transactions. I'm not sure what you're cooking up here. Probably, po poss I expect there's going to be a trade uh, sometime tomorrow. We'll see what you do here um, because you need a tight end. You have none because Hunter Henry is on the buy. And again, you have no transactions to work with anymore. So not looking good for Possum Magic. So this could be the week where we finally um, say goodbye to you for 2019. But who knows? Anything can happen. And then finally, we've got Ed Logger versus Yinzer Jags. Uh, so Ed Logger's five and six, or six and five. Yinzer's are five and six. So Yinzer's will be trying to get back to 500 and knock Ed Logger down to 500. Uh, so uh, I said, if that's what happens, uh, six and six, not a bad place to be. Uh, based on the standings here going into, would be going into week 13, final week of the season here. So yeah, this week, another slew of important matchups, um, probably more so than any week we've had so far. This is going to be the week I think that really determines, um, really pushes things in terms of who is going to be in the top half playoffs there and who is going to be uh, down there on said on the outside looking in um, said uh, yeah unfortunately big matchups there isotopes and disco uh, 10 XL entries and Darkwing jet those are the two matchups we're, gu we're guaranteed to get a team with seven losses um but yeah those are the only the, those are the only two five and sixes going against each other I mean that's Four of, out of the six of them, right? So um, if only we could have had uh, Yinzer Jags go up against Dub C this week. That would have made things much more interesting here. But um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm not looking forward to it because this was the week where I kind of hoped many weeks ago that I would not be in this position, <laughs> knowing, being fully aware that Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and Melvin Gordon would all be on a buy here in week 12. So things are not looking good for me. <laughs> not the not the spot I wanted to be in in week 12. Uh said so desperate for a win, but <laughs> here we are. Uh although the way this season has go has been going, who knows? Uh could end up could just a, it, it's been such a strange year. Uh very easily could end up going um the Isotopes way, even though they're heavily, uh, this said uh, Disco is heavily favored in this matchup. Um, it's just been said when you kind of, when you expect to lose, it seems like, or uh, and on paper when you think that you should lose, it seems to be some for some reason. Uh, you're surprised by the results here, so that's what I'm hoping for. That um, Disco's quarterback versus his defense. Tough one there. To, we'll see what happens. One of maybe one of them will do good, which means one of them won't. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Going to be looking forward to this week. That's for sure. Consequential matchups up and down the schedule here, though. So yeah, we're getting right down to it. This is week. This week and then next week, and then 
playoff time. So, um, yeah. Anything else to talk about? I don't think so. Uh, the trade deadline is this weekend. I don't know if it says here yet on Yahoo. Usually there's a little notification at the top here in the notes. The deadline to complete trades is Saturday, November 23. So I'll have to take a look here. Well, let me see if, um, let's see. I assume, let's see, that's Wednesday, Saturday. So I assume, I'm not sure if it ends going into Saturday or if Saturday is the last day. I think Saturday is probably the last day. Either way, if you don't have a trade, if you still have trades in the works, get them done by Friday. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, it will be too late. We've had lots of trades this year. Some people have gone through all their trades. I don't know if um, if it was just a, a trade sort of pissing contest between a couple of teams this year. Uh, but uh, yeah. So yeah, it's kind of so the trade deadline is kind of where we like it to be. Uh, the week before, said so the week before, about a week before Thanksgiving here. But where we like it to be is before have it have it finish um, before week twelve. So that means the last two weeks of the regular season, you can't make any trades. I think that's pretty pretty a uh, good spot for it to be in as you know you approach the last. Um, Two looks like two weeks of the season, and then going into, into the playoffs, um, I think that's a good spot to where the trades should come to a halt there, and you're kind of you got to uh, face the music with the team that you've got, and so I think that's a good spot again to for the trade deadline there. So, all right, don't think there's anything else to talk about. Really, as always, looking forward to seeing what happens this weekend. <laughs> Basically nervous and nervously um, excited, like anxious, I guess. Hopefully um, able to hold on um, to possibly get a playoff spot this year. But I am definitely on the pessimistic side <laughs> going into this weekend. But we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, that's it. Enough rambling from me. Thanks to everybody. Thanks for watching or listening or whatever it is you do. Assuming any of you actually made it to this point in time. But yeah, we will see you back here. Hopefully, no injuries this week. No big injuries to any of our teams. Um, and hopefully everyone's team and players meets or exceeds expectations. And we have a ton of points and everybody has a good time. Uh, except for the people who lose, of course. But um, yeah. Hopefully nothing but good things this week, and we will see you back here next week as we recap week 12 and get ready for the last week of the regular season. There already, time flies when you're uh, treading water in the standings. All right, guys, thanks again, and see you back here next week.